Hey everyone, welcome back. I thought we'd take a look today at the isolated power that I've added to the workbench. When I, uh, when I set up my workbench here, I went out and I bought a BK Precision isolation transformer. Um, it handles one and a quarter watts, has a little circuit breaker on it, small, compact, it's off to the side, uh, and it works pretty good. But I wanted something a little more robust, uh, can handle a little bit more current, um, that was easier to control in terms of being able to turn it on and off. So I went to eBay, looked, found myself um, a 4 amp isolation transformer. It was just a bare transformer. And that's it there in the corner, all 16 pounds of it. And that's hooked up to there's a little gray, little junction box thingy there. That's uh, plugs into there, that plugs into the wall. And there's a cable running from there that comes to an outlet over here. And I can just shut the whole thing on and off right from here. So if we come back up here, turn that on. Um, little outlet tester is just plugged in there, lets me know that the power's on. And the switch to the left allows me to either ground or not ground the outlet there. So by default, I keep it ungrounded, so we've got just isolated, isolated power. So plugged into that is a Variac. We're going to come over here and take a look. Um, this is an old Variac that I've had for probably 30 years, sitting around, never really did anything with it. And so after getting the bench put together, I decided let's make use of it. So I built a nice little enclosure for it, um, made a knob out of... Uh, piece of decorative wood block and we've got some outlets on it on off switch and an AC voltmeter uh, the AC voltmeter is a cheapie from from China uh, it needed its own power supply so I went in and uh, cannibalized a small switch mode wall wart power supply and that's all sitting in the back of the box there and if you look what you can see you can adjust this. Goes a little bit over. Goes up to about 100, 130 um, unloaded. Uh, the switch over here uses the other set of terminals on the Variac. If I want to get more voltage out of it, I can switch this over and actually get close to 150, 160 volts out of it. But most of the time, we just leave it set over there. So let's just bring this back down to 120. There we go. And then plugged into that is my dim bulb limiter. And as opposed to using a fuse or a circuit breaker, what this does is if the power supply or whatever of the item that I've got plugged in, you know, or the device under test that I'm working on, um, shorts, uh, rather than blowing a breaker or a fuse or something, what will happen is the, uh, you know, the light bulb will light up and absorb that current. So just to show an example of that, um, I have a little shorting plug here that I created. And uh, you normally would not want to plug this into an outlet. But if we do, you can see that the light bulb comes on and it's absorbing all the current that would be running through there. So unplug that. So the little meter that's plugged in there, that's also a voltmeter. And you may ask, if I've got a voltmeter on the Variac, what do I need one on the tester for? And that just show me what the voltage drop is across the light bulb when it's in the circuit. So let's have a look and plug something in and see what it does. All right, so here I've got my Pro Junior 2 amp. Uh, a small little, you know, 30 watt tube amplifier that I use. Um, if we take a look here, we can see that on the input side, it takes 120 volts and it's rated at 70 watts. So, what we're going to do is we're going to come back over here, set this up here, and I'm going to kill this light. 
what we're going to do is we're going to turn turn the amp on and if you give it a second you can see that the bulb is lit ever so dimly and the voltage across the light bulb has dropped down to 108 volts from 120 so there's about a 12 volt drop across the light bulb um, not bad amplifier will still work just fine on that um, but what this tells us is that you know there isn't a short in the amp. If there was a short in the amp, that bulb would be lit up very brightly. Um, if we want to give it a little more headroom, we could switch in the other bulb. And the first bulb is a 150 watt bulb, and that provides about about an amp and a half, amp and a quarter of um, yeah, amp and a quarter of current limiting. Uh, the other bulb is a 300 watt bulb that provides two and a half amps and if I put them both in not that you're going to see a difference here that would give me basically three and three quarter amps of current limiting so in terms of the protection that I get from the bulbs it actually matches well with everything here because my variac can do um, can do four amps I think it's like 4.1 the isolation transformer is also good for four amps, so everything is limited just just below that. Um, you know, we're not going to go over, we're not going to exceed that. But as you can see, with both bulbs in, you know, I'm showing 119 volts coming out of the variac, and I've got 117 volts coming across the bulbs. So there's, you know, there's almost no voltage drop there. If we put the one bulb back in. As the element, as the filament heats up, voltage drops back down to around 107. So this is fine for the amp. This is probably fine for most other stuff that's that's running. Um, you know, nothing's that voltage sensitive that I'm working with. But it does provide that little degree of protection. So one question you may have is, why bother with all this? Um, well, truth be told, I bothered with all this because I wanted to get a better understanding of it. Um, the Variac is something useful. It's a good, good item to have. Um, I've had it for a while. I wanted to put it to some good use. I looked up online. I can still buy this very same Variac brand new for about 350 bucks. Um, I had it for free. So for you know, twenty dollars worth of twenty dollars worth of components and a little bit of time. Um, I have a useful piece of test gear on the bench. Uh, the dim bulb limiter, again, um, it was more just to get an understanding of it um, as a safety device. It's not not a bad thing to have. Uh, it looks kind of cool. I mean, you know. Not the best reason for a piece of test equipment, but hey, you know, it's a little bit, little bit neater than a breaker. And the fact that it gives a visual indication of what's going on, I also, I also like that. So that's about it for this video. Um, hope you found it interesting. Um, if you have any questions or something, leave it in the comments. And uh, I'll see you all next time. Take care.